Greetings and welcome to The Dave. In this video, I'll cover everything that you need to know about keeping the Amano shrimp. I'll go over the proper way to set up their tank and what to feed them, as well as how best to use Amano shrimp to help you get rid of algae. Then we'll take a look at some interesting shrimp behavior, including how a shrimp molts, as well as how to tell a male shrimp from a female shrimp. We'll even take a look at breeding the Amano shrimp with a close-up look at their eggs as well as what's really needed to raise their babies. I have some amazing footage of these fascinating animals and there's a lot to talk about, so let's get started. All shrimp have very delicate mouth parts that are designed for ingesting very small bits of food so they prefer eating things that are soft and easily broken down into small pieces. The Amano shrimp uses the tiny hairs located at the end of each of its claws to bring food particles to its mouth. Notice how this shrimp is not using its claws to break off large pieces of this food pellet. And because they're only able to eat very small bits of food at a time, they need to feed nearly constantly. So, a mono shrimp are almost always picking away at one surface or another in the tank. These surfaces are covered in a substance known as a biofilm. For those of you unfamiliar with biofilm, it's a collection of microorganisms that grow on nearly every surface in a mature aquarium. Biofilms are an important food source for many shrimp species. Be sure to notice the tiny hairs at the end of each of its claws. These shrimp do tend to be aggressive when they eat, with the larger amanos taking food from the smaller ones. Smaller shrimp, such as cherry shrimp, may not get enough food if there are lots of hungry amanos in the same tank. Foods that come in a very small pellet form are a good idea because it's easier to spread them around the aquarium so that everyone can get their fair share of the food. Nonetheless, feeding a mono shrimp is easy because they're omnivores, so they eat just about everything. Fish flakes, fish pellets, algae wafers, dead fish, dead plants, frozen green beans, cooked carrots, spinach, and kale are all possible options. If you use vegetables to feed your shrimp, be sure to wash them thoroughly in order to help remove any toxins before using them in your tank. And if you're using a mono shrimp to help control an outbreak of algae, it's important to remember that they won't eat all types of algae, and it's not their preferred food. So it's best to reduce or even eliminate all of the other foods going into the tank. This will encourage the amano shrimp to focus their attention on the algae and not on the delicious flake food that they've been getting. And remember, if the tank contains fish, most fish can go several days without food, a couple days without eating, and some of those hungry fish might even begin to help the amanos eat the algae. Of course, it's better to address what may be causing the excessive growth of algae in the first place. It may be helpful to reduce the intensity of the light and or to shorten the length of time that the lights are left on. Putting the aquarium lights on a timer can also be very beneficial. It's important to note that a mono shrimp will not eat healthy aquarium plants. However, once a portion of the plant dies and begins to break down, they will pick at the parts that are rotting to remove anything that's edible. The smallest tank that I would use for a single Amano shrimp is 5 gallons. However, it's important to note that in the wild, Amano shrimp gather together in large numbers, so they're somewhat social, and it's often recommended that they be kept in groups of 6 or more. So a 10-gallon tank, or preferably something larger, is a much better option. If you keep just one Amano shrimp in the tank, it will tend to hide more often than if it's kept in a small group. 
As far as the substrate goes, I prefer to use sand at the bottom of the tank because sand doesn't trap uneaten food the way gravel does, and the shrimp can sift through the upper layer of the sand looking for little bits of food. Using lots of live plants and driftwood and a few rocks in the tank will help provide a much more complex environment with lots of surface area where the shrimp can graze on the naturally occurring biofilm that will begin to grow on all of these surfaces. A complex environment will also give your shrimp lots of places to hide. Hiding places are important because when they molt it takes a while before their new shell hardens. During this time, they're very vulnerable to injury from fish as well as other shrimp. Female Amano shrimp can be especially stressed by overzealous males who begin chasing them soon after they molt. The more hiding places that you can provide for your shrimp, the better off they'll be. Artificial hides for molting shrimp can also be purchased in stores, online, or even made at home. Be careful about what you put in the aquarium. Items that are not designed for the fish tank may contain toxins that over time can leach into the water and harm the shrimp. I recommend using a cover on the tank because these shrimp have been known to crawl out of the aquarium if the conditions are not to their liking. A tight-fitting lid is especially important in the first few days after they've been introduced to a new tank. In fact, after the initial introduction into their new environment, as long as the water parameters are acceptable, they're far less likely to try and escape. However, another benefit of covering the tank is that it helps to keep out airborne contaminants like spray deodorants, perfumes, air fresheners, cat hair, and the like. Another alternative to covering the tank is to lower the water level in the aquarium a couple inches to help make it more difficult for them to escape. Either way, keep the shrimp happy and they're far less likely to try and leave. Sponge filters are the ideal filters for all shrimp because they pose no danger to the adults or their babies. Furthermore, the surface of the sponge collects little bits of food all over it, which then provides a valuable grazing area for the shrimp. Here's a short list of some possible tank mates for your Amano shrimp. And here's a short list of creatures that would not make good tank mates for your shrimp. When it comes to housing shrimp with bettas, success really depends on the layout of the tank, as well as the personality of the individual fish. Some bettas are very mellow, while others can be quite aggressive. It's important to remember that just because a fish can't swallow the shrimp whole doesn't mean that it can't harass the shrimp to death. And your Amano shrimp will be much more outgoing and visible in a tank containing only a few small, peaceful fish. They'll also be more at ease if they're kept in groups of six or more shrimp. A mono shrimp can tolerate a wide range of water parameters, so they're easy to care for. In fact, they're probably the perfect shrimp for a beginner. A full-grown female can reach a length of just over two inches. The males are a little smaller and only grow to about an inch and a half in length. They can live for three or more years, and as with most aquatic creatures, the warmer the water, the shorter their lifespan. I like to keep mine somewhere around the mid-70s. When it comes to pH, they're flexible, but it's best to have them near a neutral pH of 7. Very acidic water can cause their hard outer shell to erode and can interfere with shell development during molting. 
Very soft water can interfere with molting as well. However, I wouldn't get too worried about these levels. Amano shrimp are very hardy and will do just fine in most public and private water supplies. This is a female Amano shrimp. Females are larger than males. On female shrimp, this area beneath the abdomen, known as the undercarriage, is larger than it is on the male shrimp. The enlarged undercarriage makes it easier for the female shrimp to hold and protect the hundreds upon hundreds of tiny eggs that she'll carry until they hatch. This light-colored area is where her ovaries are located, and obviously this white patch will be absent on the male shrimp. This is a male shrimp, and notice that the male has no ovaries. If this was a female, her ovaries would be visible as a white patch right about here. Another and far less reliable method of sexing a mono shrimp is to use the pattern of dots and dashes along the side of the body to tell male from female. On female Amano shrimp, the dots along the side of the body tend to merge together to form small lines, while on the males, the dots tend to remain separate and distinct from each other. However, the difference in these patterns of dots and dashes may not be very noticeable in young shrimp. In order to grow, all shrimp need to periodically shed their old shell and replace it with a new, larger shell. This process is known as molting, or if you'd like to get really fancy, it's called echidesis. When a mature female shrimp molts, she also releases pheromones into the water that signal to the male shrimp that there is a receptive female in the area. The males then begin searching for the female shrimp. Once a suitable partner is found, the male and female shrimp will mate. During the mating process, the male shrimp passes several packets of reproductive material to the female shrimp. The female stores these packets until the eggs in her ovaries are ready to be fertilized. The female fertilizes the eggs internally just as they're about to leave her body. Then she attaches the fertilized eggs to special structures beneath her abdomen known as swimmerettes or pleopods. The swimmerettes are multifunctional appendages that are used for swimming as well as reproduction. Both the male and the female shrimp have swimmerettes, but on the females they're a bit larger in order to accommodate the hundreds upon hundreds of eggs that they'll need to carry. The female waits until after she molts before placing the eggs on her swimmerettes. And the reason is her swimmerettes are in their best condition and her undercarriage is at its cleanest shortly after a molt, so it's the ideal time to transfer the eggs from her ovaries to her undercarriage. Be sure to notice a new group of eggs are already beginning to develop. Keeping everything clean and oxygenated is a high priority for the mother shrimp. Her back legs are incredibly agile and she uses both of them to keep everything clean and in its place. She carries the eggs until they're fully developed and they begin to hatch. This usually takes about four to six weeks. These particular eggs are going to hatch in less than 24 hours from now. Those little black dots are the eyes of the baby shrimp.
In the wild, Amano shrimp inhabit rivers where the current sweeps their newborn babies downstream and out to sea, where the tiny shrimp become part of the ocean's floating community of plankton. The tiny shrimp remain in the ocean, presumably near the coast, for about a month or so. They float near the surface and they're attracted to light, which makes sense because they eat phytoplankton, which is also attracted to light and tends to gather near the surface. In this early larval stage, the tiny shrimp float. They don't have any swimmerettes, so they swim by rapidly moving their legs as if they're running through the water. To make this form of movement a little easier, their legs don't have any claws, but they do have lots of tiny hairs to help with swimming. During this saltwater phase, the larva will molt nine times, and with each molt, their bodies are gradually transformed from the primitive larval form into a juvenile that looks and acts like an adult Amano shrimp. After the ninth and final molt, the young shrimp can only survive in salt water for a few days, so they make the long dangerous journey back up into a freshwater river, most likely the same river in which they were born. To try and duplicate this complex life cycle and breed the Amano shrimp in a home aquarium would certainly be difficult, but definitely not impossible. The primary obstacle to successfully breeding the Amano shrimp is not the transition from freshwater to saltwater and then back to freshwater again. The main difficulty lies in providing appropriate foods for the baby shrimp, keeping the water clean, and keeping the water parameters stable. The final challenge becomes the timing of when to transition the larva back to fresh water, because the larva don't all mature at the same rate. So, it would be necessary to handpick which shrimp were ready for the transition back to fresh water and which shrimp were not, a task that would be difficult and very time-consuming. So, very few people attempt to breed this species, and it's more than likely that Uramano shrimp was taken directly from the wild. And that concludes this presentation on the Amano shrimp. Please support my effort to continue bringing you these high-quality documentaries by subscribing to this channel, hitting the like button, and leaving a comment. And, as always, I thank you for your time.